sections on 7.1 solving system of two equations. So when we're solving system of equations, it means that we're going to have two equations, something like this, two or more actually. Sometimes there could be two or more equations. And when you have two equations, most likely you'll have two unknown variables. So like in this case, both x and y's are unknown, and that's what we're looking for and solving for. If you have three system of equations, then most likely you're also going to have three variables. So sometimes you'll actually see, start seeing as x, y, and z as well. So, um, but for today, what we're going to work on is just two system equations. So with two system equations, we're solving for is what is x and what, what is y as well, using the first method, which is called the substitution method. Now, the substitution method says that I'm going to take an equation, fix it up, and then we're going to substitute it into another equation and then start solving for it. Your whole goal is to have one variable in that first equation so you can solve for x using algebra, and then we'll substitute it back into the other form to solve for the y. Okay. Now, it doesn't actually matter if you solve for x first or if you solve for y. Um, you want to start somewhere. Now, here's a clue. If you look at the coefficients on these guys right here, usually you want to find a coefficient that has a 1. That's probably the easiest way is to have a coefficient of 1. If you have a coefficient of 1, like for example, like this y right here, I can bring the 2x over to the other side of the equal sign, get rid of the negative, and then substitute it into from first equation into the second equation. Now, if I substitute it, let's say, Let's say we get x by itself on this part of the equation, or get x by itself on this part, or get y by itself on this part. It really doesn't matter. There is no wrong or right. The only part is that if you have a coefficient in front of the either the x or the y, and you work with that one, you'll maybe have some fractions to deal with. But we should be stronger with our fractions, so it shouldn't really make a difference. Okay? So let's go ahead and take this one then. So I'm going to call this equation number one right here and the equation number two, so that way we can refer to it. So we're going to take this equation number one and we're going to manipulate it so that we get y by itself and then I can substitute it into the equation number two. So we're going to get negative y equals, and I'm going to bring the 2x over to the other side of the equal sign. To bring it over, I have to subtract 2x. So we have is then negative 2x plus 10. And it's plus 10 because, remember, this is a positive 10. If it was a negative 10, then it would have been a minus 10 instead. Now, you can't have a negative in front of an x or y to uh, solve for it, so we need to get rid of that negative. So I'm going to divide by negative 1 through all of it. Now, remember, when you divide by negative 1, it has to be all, not just on 1. So I don't like is this divided by negative 1 because then some of you guys will forget to distribute that negative 1 to all of it right there. So now we have is y is equal to negative and negative gives me a positive, so it's positive 2x. Positive and negative gives me a negative, so it's minus 10 right there. Okay? Now I'm going to box or circle this right here because eventually we're going to come back to this. So with equation number 1, I fixed it up. And now I'm going to take this and we're going to substitute it into equation number 2. Now do not put it back into equation number 1 because you're going to get a 0 on this. Okay? So since this is y equals, that means we're going to substitute this y into this part of that equation right there. All right? So we're going to rewrite that as then 3x plus 2. And then the substitution is all of this part right here. So that's the 2x minus 10 equals, and then 1 right there. So again, all I did was substitute this y right there with the y that's over here. Okay? So now the algebra starts. So we're going to distribute this 2 right there. So we have this then 3x plus 4x minus 20 is equal to 1. We're going to combine like terms. So combine right there. So that's 7x plus 20, I'm sorry, minus, oops, minus 20 is equal to 1. We're going to subtract 20 from both sides, or add, add 20 now. So add 20 from both sides, add 20. You're going to have 7x is equal to 21. So then if we divide by 7 on both sides, x is equal to positive 3. Okay, so that's one part. Because remember, we're solving for both x and y. So the nice thing about this is if I circle this, I know where I'm going back to. I'm going to take this x right here, and we're going to substitute it into this equation to figure out what y is equal to. So since it's already set up for us, all I have to do is substitute in the x. So 2 times, and then we said it was 3, so that's 3 minus 10. 
So y equals 6 minus 10, so x is equal to negative 4. Okay, so final answer, we want to put in parentheses since it's x and y. So this is x right there, and this is y right there. So that's my final, final answer that we're going to work on. Okay, so again, all I do is I take the first or second equation, manipulate it so you get either x or y by itself, try to find the one that has a coefficient of 1, so that way it's easier. Once you get that, you're going to substitute into the other equation, and then from there, do your algebra, solve for it. Now, again, this is where we only had one variable. So if you have an x and a y, something went wrong. So go back and check your work, okay? So then from there, we should be able to substitute into that original equation, solve for it, and get the x and the y right there, all right? So that's method one, which is the substitution method. Now, method number two is called the elimination method. And again, this is a method that we've already learned in algebra one and also in algebra two. Elimination method says that I'm going to eliminate either the x variable or the y variable and then start solving using the algebra. It doesn't matter which one you eliminate first. It just, it's all on your preference right there, okay? So when you use the elimination method, let's say I want to eliminate the x's right here. You have to find the lowest common number between it. It's kind of like finding the lowest common denominator. Find the lowest common number between it to uh, start the problem. If I wanted to eliminate the y, same thing, the lowest common number between that as well. So let's just get rid of x first. So let's eliminate that, and then we'll solve for y, okay? So the lowest common number between this, between 2 and 3, is a 6, right? So what we're going to change this into a 6. So to get a 6 on the top part right there, I have to multiply everything by 3 to get a 6. And everything on the bottom, I have to multiply by 2 to get a 6 right there, okay? So now let's change that equation number 1. So again, I'm going to call this number 1. This is number 2. So then distribute this 3 into all of this equation number 1. So that's going to be 6x plus 9y is equal to 15. And then we do the same thing for this 2 right here. So it's negative 6x plus 10y is equal to 42, okay? So now from here, we have to decide if we're adding or subtracting. Now, this is where I know some Algebra 1 teachers and even Algebra 2 teachers will always say you have to have a positive, you have to negative, so you're going to multiply by a negative something when you get to this part right here, a negative 2 or a negative 3 or something like that. But I say that you actually have more control. So in this case, it doesn't matter if you have positive or negative. That's why my concern was not the positive or negative. My concern was the lowest common number. So that's why I said 6 was the lowest common and number between this. So be, from here, if I have a positive and a negative, I have a control on this. So let me also show you this table right here. Now the table says, if my first equation is a positive and my second equation is a positive, I'm going to control it with a minus right there. If my first equation is a negative some number and the second equation is a negative some number, I'm going to control it again with a minus right there. If it's a combination of either positive, negative, or negative, positive right there, either in the first or second equation, then you're always going to control it with a plus right there, okay? So the positive will, obviously, if you subtract from that, will cause it to go away, and same thing with this negative. Negative and negative will turn into positive. That's the reason. So the trick, again, of this is if the signs are the same, right, then you're going to control with a minus. If the signs are different, One's positive, one's negative, then you're going to control it with a plus instead, okay? So then going back to this, I have as a positive 6 and a negative 6 right there. So since I have a positive and a negative combination right there, we're going to control it with a plus right there. So with the plus out here, I'm going to put a plus out here. I'm going to circle that because I'm going to remind myself that's my controller. So with that, I'm going to control that. So it's going to be 6 plus a negative 6. That eliminates that right there. Then it becomes 9 plus 10 is 19y, right? Then we also have is then 15 plus 42. That gives me 57. And then from there, again, we continue with the algebra, divide 19 both uh, from 57 and 19. And I believe it goes in evenly by 3. Okay, so y is equal to 3. Now, once I get y equals 3, I can actually go back and use the substitution method to solve for the x variable. So we want to put this at y equals 3 either into the original equation of equation 1 
or equation number two, you can actually use these right here as well, the fixed up new equations of one and two. The only thing is, once you get to here, usually the numbers or the coefficients get larger, like we got this 42 going on. So if you put it into one of these equations, you're gonna have to deal with some larger numbers. So I usually prefer to go back to the original right there and then substitute it in here to find the uh, smaller number. So let's go with the um, 2x plus 3y equals five, since that's a smaller equation. So I'm gonna substitute now 2x plus three, and we know then y is three, so we substitute that three equals five right there. Okay, so again, I used equation number one right there. So now from here, we'll go draw a little arrow right there. So from here, we're solving for x right there, because that's the only variable that we have right here. So that becomes 2x plus nine is equal to five. We're gonna subtract nine from both sides. Then you're gonna get negative four, and as x is equal to uh, negative 2. So again, final answer that we're going to write it up as negative 2, positive 3 as a final answer right there. Okay? Make sure it's in a coordinate form right there. The reason why is because then method number 3, I'm going to show you why we put it into coordinate. Now, method number 3, the last method that we're learning today, is called a graphing method. So the graphing method says that we have, again, still a system of equations right there, but we're actually going to graph it out. So, graphing this out right here, let's put the calculator here, turn it on, y equals, okay, so we're going to, it's already set up as y equals for us, so that's beautiful, so then we all have to do is now substitute it or plug it in into the calculator, so we get x squared minus 6x, and then the second equation is 3x, okay? So what you want to do now is graph that out. You're going to have to play around with the window size on that. But what your goal is to do is to figure out is to get a nice picture. That's, a, that's window size of, let's say, 10s and 20s. So let's go with 20s all the way around. So let's see if that's going to make a difference so I can get a nice picture. Oh, that's 50, so that's probably why. Okay, so here we go. Oh, no, that's not enough. Okay, so then I do want 50 then. So let's go back to the y of 50. Okay, so the intersections, meaning that where the two graphs intersect or they cross right there, that's a solution. And same thing right here, if it's a parabola shape, that means it intersects at two places. Somewhere around here, it's going to intersect, and then obviously it intersects right here as well. So we're going to find out where do they both intersect at. So finding that on the calculator, we're going to use the second calculate. So second, and then calculate. And then there's a part where it says intersection number five. So I'm going to use that number five. Now with that, there's going to be this little blinking cursor, and then the calculator is going to start talking to you. So when it says first curve right there, you want to be in the area or close to the area of the intersection. If you're far off, let's say for this part right here, you're close over here, it actually will start finding the intersection over here, which is fine. We need to find this one and this one as well. But if you're starting off and you're in this area, you might as well make sure you're around this area right here. So I'm just moving my cursor just to see where it is. Okay, so it's on the parabola one. So somewhere around here, I'm just going to press enter. And this is going to say second curve. It should automatically jump to the next curve. Now, here's also the problem. If your window size is too small and it doesn't actually catch it, then it may actually reject you at the end. So uh, we're cutting it really close right there. But let's try to you know make sure it does catch it. So let's see if it does catch it. So I'm going to press enter because it's going to go onto this equation right here. And so it's somewhere around this line right there. Okay. So then when it says guess, ignore it. So we're just going to press enter again. We're going to let the calculator do the work. And it intersected at 0, 0. So right there at the origin is where it's crossing. Okay. So let me graph this out also on my paper right here. So try to graph it out as accurate as possible to what you have on the graphing calculator. Because that's the whole point of using the graphing calculator. Oops. So let's see. Going through the 0 right there. Going something like this. And then obviously going through here, something like this. So here's my graphs right there. So right here at 0, 0 is my first intersection right there. Okay? Now we're going to find out the second intersection, which is somewhere around here. So using the graphing calculator again, we're going to go second and then calculate and the intersection number 5. And again, you want to be closer in that area right there. 
So we want to get closer somewhere around here. It doesn't have to be exactly on it right there. It could be in the vicinity. That's fine enough. Okay. So that's close enough. So I'm going to press enter and it's going to be on second curve. So make sure again, it's on that linear equation right there. So it's close enough. Yes. So press enter. Yes. No. Nope. Let the work be done by the calculator. And the intersection is at 927. So right here is at 927. Okay. So the final answer then is these two right there. In this case, we're going to have two answers. So final answer, 0, 0, and 9, 27. So notice that I put these answers in parentheses, right? So going back to now the previous methods that we've had, so in this case, these were in parentheses. So technically, if you wanted to check your word, you can always take these two equations, set it equal to y equals, graph it out, find out where they intersect. Because both of these graphs, they should actually cross at this point at 3, negative 4. Okay, same thing with the elimination method. If I take both of these equations and we get y by itself and we manipulate them right there, when they graph it out, they should cross at negative 2 and 3. You may want to just to do that just to make sure that these both work right there. Okay, so that's a checking method as well to graph it out because, again, the third method is the graphing method. Okay, now I also want to go over this last one right here. So in this last case right here, if you don't have y equals, then obviously you need to manipulate it and get y equals so you can put in the graphing calculator if you're doing the graphing method. So in this case, I'm going to take my equation number 1, call it 1 and 2 again. So we're going to get this where x is on, brought over to the other side, so we're going to get y is equal to positive x, right, minus 7, and do the same thing for this one right here, y is equal to positive x, and then plus 3, okay? So we're going to graph this out now. Let's so go back to that y equals. We're going to have to delete those out. So it was, again, uh, y equals x minus 7 on the first one. So x minus 7. And then the second one was y equals x plus 3. So x plus 3. Okay, so we graph it out. And we're going to get something like this. All right, so that looks good. So let me see where it crosses again. Oh. It doesn't even cross at zero. So we have a, some two linear lines that are going something like this and something like this right here. So this is probably the plus seven right or the plus three right there, and this is probably the minus seven right there. Okay. So now obviously these are linear lines. We know that because it's y equals mx plus b format. So if it's in y equals mx plus plus b format, there are two linear lines right there. Okay, now some of the equations when you do the substitution method and also the elimination method, we had no solution. And then on the no solution, I want to make sure we know it's either going to be no solution or many solution. There's two parts of it. So in this case, the two graphs right here, they do not cross. Remember, if the graphs cross like this, wherever they cross, that's the solution right there. That means that's the answer, right? Since in this case, this will never, ever cross, because it's going to go to infinity and beyond for both ways, this, in this case, will be no solution. So no solution. That's your final answer right there. Okay? Now, when do you have many solution? Many solution is actually when you work this equation out, and when you graph it out, it's actually going to be exactly the same line. And when you have exactly the same line, then you have as many solutions because that means there are two equations on top of each other like this. So all of them, since they are on top of each other, crossing on each other, so there's many solutions because they're on top of each other right there. Okay? So this case will be many solution or infinite solution. Um, sometimes you'll see in the back of the book. Okay? So those are the two types that you'll have. So when you get to the elimination method and also the um, substitution method, when things start to cross out, then you need to get y by itself and figure out if it's exactly the same line or if they're parallel to each other, like this one right here. If they're parallel, because if they're parallel, then it's no solution. If they're exactly the same equation, then actually it becomes many solution. So make sure you're careful about those solution problems right there, okay? All right, so those are the three methods that we're going to work on for the 7.1.